Welcome to Dugout Discussions with the Coach. I'm your host, Todd Scott Miller, and with me tonight is Rob Blomstrom. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about things he's working on and doing and some tech. And he's a, he's a tech guru, genius. Do you use the term guru or genius to describe yourself? I don't, but I don't mind if other people do. Okay, cool. <laughs> Got to have some kind of humility. I'm humble. <laughs> I'm the most humble person I know. <laughs> So anyway, we're going to just uh, be talking about that and what he's doing and how he's helping people improve prove their lives. So, But anyway, we met, so Rob and I, we met at church. That's right. The Harvest. A long time ago. But man, like, Couldn't be that long ago. I've only been here since 2011. Well, that's like at least eight years. Yeah. Well, Alpha was 2013. I was looking back on some of the records. So that, that was a while ago. So, okay, so six years ago. So yeah, so we did the we did the alpha together. My mm-hmm. wife and I had done it and led it, and then kind of. Yeah, I had done it up north, and with a group that did it, they probably still are on a rotating, every six months, just like clockwork. Yeah, it's a great program. It is, and they've revamped it from what I understand. So. Yeah, I kind of I kind of try that philosophy here with people when they come over and feed them, and then sit them down to talk because their defenses are down now and it's well it worked too because i had one of those awful days and it was very relaxing just, just sit and chat and... sit chat eat monge yeah well you know building relationships is important mm-hmm. yeah especially for a guy who's starting his own business so but we'll get there we'll get there well, let's talk a little bit about what rob's done what rob has done tell me where you Oh goodness! Started all this tech journey, and you don't want to go that far back because nobody cares about the Apple II. <laughs> Steve Jobs, maybe used to. No, I, I prefer to my, my, my hero, Steve Woz, the other Steve. The other Steve. The yeah. other Steve. Jobs was a good talker, but Wozniak was the brains. He was a genius. Yes, but um, no, just over over the years, the journey has been to you know just learn. I. I my day job is designing circuit boards. Okay. I had originally gone to college for engineering, decided that that wasn't what I wanted to do because, um, well, the classes where I couldn't understand the professors added up, and I was like, okay, I need to change majors. So we changed to math because half of my credits or more were already there. Well, God has a sense of humor. I know sooner I get out of college, I answer an ad for a computer operator which turns into drafting circuit boards. So I'm right back into it on the opposite side of the fence. I'm not an engineer. I'm the guy taking the engineer's abstract ideas and turning them into actual boards that are in everything you use. Things that work. Things that, well, they, if they work, that, that would be good. They don't always work. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But um, done, done telecom, you know, which is switches and, and anything that you communicate with, I've done uh, aerospace. I have stuff in back at the time. I think it was the F-22s and the B-2s. And I, I have toys everywhere. Um, most recently, to kind of fast forward just a hair, the GPS-3 satellite that went up last December was done in 2011. They finally launched it. So the toys and the, uh, the group I had built to build those, to, to make those toys, um, is finally like be able to pat themselves on the back. And wow. Say, you know, it's up. So that that's a, that's a nice one. But if you've ever heard of a Palm Pilot, yeah, absolutely. I mean, our vision of the future is what now has become smartphones. But you should have seen the Frankenstein monsters we had back in the day. We had a Motorola flip phone mated with this Palm Pilot, and it was it was the ugliest thing on the planet. But it was the great great grandfather of what we use today. Yeah. Yeah, I remember using the Palm Pilot a lot. To... Well, the nice thing with those was it worked. Yeah, and it had some good games. Yeah, and if you ever use one of those little white modems, the U.S. Robotics. Yeah, yeah. The group I was with did those. Man, that's way back. Ninety-eight, ninety-seven. Yeah. But they were shipping fifty thousand of those. I forget if it was a week or a month, but either way, it's impressive. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of damn boards. Yeah, yeah. and that's a lot of modems, and we don't even really use them much anymore. No. At least not in the same way. No, I mean they're still in use for things that like, I think I think they're used in uh, heating systems to call home type of things. Yeah, yeah, we use them for long distance stuff when we yeah. got some controls way out, way out 
Yeah. Way out. Yeah. But and I was, you only get to get information back every now and then. But it's slow. It's small. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, the one modem is still for sale. You can go online. Big black one like this, you know. And apparently that's still selling all these years later, you know, from the 90s. <laughs> so now some people may not know what a modem is. You had one here. And it called another one, like a telephone call, yeah. one-to-one, and you got internet connection through that. Well, take it back a step. It was originally you took the handset from those wired phones, which if you only have used a smartphone, you don't even know about those. Oh, and you put it in the And the it cradle. has the cradle you put it in, and it used to go wee 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 War games. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, yes. Oh, I, no, I mean, that's, that's another story. We'll get to that one. <laughs> and I met the fellow who invented that. Oh really? Yeah, he was he was with U.S. Robotics, and he was he was he, he's still he's still going around making companies, and uh, but he's a genius, you know, great guy. Um, I also met the guy if you remember the original Pong game. Yeah. You know, beep beep yeah. beep beep. I played yeah. that on my grandparents' television. The and... story he had to tell. He was working with I think it was Lockheed or no, it was a company called Sanders. Lockheed eventually bought them, and then Martin Marietta bought Lockheed. But Sanders, he invented this thing, and they sold the rights to, I think it was Sony, because they didn't see any value in this, this video technology. Well, that was the mistake of the century, because that simple technology turned into the video game industry. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oops. Which is, which is big deal now. I even yeah. talked about how, how now video games, people watch gamers play like online. Oh, that's my kids. They'll watch somebody play, of all games, they'll watch them play Minecraft. Yeah. That is the most numbing thing to do. Never mind watch. <laughs> it's, it, it's like, it's like, uh, it's just, it's just numbing. Yeah. I'm thinking back to when I had my Palm Pilot and I played Drug Wars. <laughs> yeah. The simple stuff. No, I miss the little, uh, the, with the stylus, you used to do the, the, the um, you could write. The swiping. Not the right, but it was like it wasn't regular writing. It was um, sten like a steno. Yeah, you type had of to writing. learn the, the alphabet, the, the short shorthand. Shorthand, alphabet. that's the word. Yeah. And uh, but that I miss that. That was just I was so much faster than that. that. Meanwhile, I watch my kids and they're like, their thumbs are hitting buttons. I'm sitting there going, "How do you hit the buttons? They're so small." <laughs> How do you even I'm hit all the thumbs. Bike buttons? But, I keep getting uh, autocorrected. All kinds of weird stuff. I go back and it's like, what the hell was that? Yeah. Now, I worked on a computer system when I was with the Service Bureau, which as a Service Bureau, we used to work on any customer that the sales guys could come in with. And we sat in, in this one case, we were sitting in Atlanta. But we did work all over the country. And the beauty back then was, is you had the time between sending out your, your, your data via FedEx. So you always had a two-day window to work on somebody else's stuff. So you just played that shell game, you know, for everybody, and everybody was happy. Now everything's too immediate. But I did a design with them. It was a joint venture between Martin Marietta and Sega. The original, you remember, if you ever sat in an arcade and played the, the original sit-down tank battle game, mm -hmm. where you felt immersed, that was the commercial version of their simulator. Really? And I got the board sitting in my office. I should have brought my toys with me, all my boards. That's cool. So... Man, I, it's a, that's what I mean. I just I've touched so many different little pieces over the years. Yeah, you know. But the one company I was with was 3Com. They bought U.S. Robotics at one point before they that before that whole thing went south. And that was the 3Com was the company that invented Ethernet, which is how every network talks in this world in, in the world today. You know, anything that really really talks. And you know, you just pick up stuff. And my networking skills came from the fact that one day they were deciding they were going to move buildings. So we're going to take my, my group from this building and put them in this building. And they said, oh, we'll have you up in a week. And I went, no, you're not. I know IT. You guys can never do anything in a week. And this is when we actually had people sitting in the same building as us. Everybody not out there right now is going, oh, my God, IT is the same everywhere. Well, the problem, no, IT, what the, well, IT was the problem. They weren't bad. And, but they, and they were sitting in the building with us. The problem today is everybody's sitting over in another continent. Yeah, yeah you know, that's true. It's ridiculous. The, we call them the helpless desk because they call up, they go through their checklist, and they say, you know, how can we help you? Well, you can't. 
I need to show you something. And you're not here. <laughs> yeah. And then it goes through different channels, and eventually somebody finally gets it. But this at this time, I knew I had designs that my my team had to, had to finish. So I got myself a hub back when I used to actually be able to use a purchase order and buy stuff, for, you know, and 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 write it off at the company because my manager just had to say, "Okay, go get it," you know. So I went and got it. Went to um, back when CompUSA was still around. Yeah, yeah. missed them. And picked up a hub, picked up a bunch of cables, had no damn clue what I was doing with them, but we brought them back. I got the network running before we had to unplug at the place we were at, and all I did is milk milk crated it over to the new building, and we set up, and we were up and running in, you know, a day. And everyone else is sitting there milling around, drinking their coffee, going, what are you guys doing? We're working. <laughs> Like how dare we work? We're making everyone look bad. <laughs> yeah, like why? You know, but we, we got had a break here. You know, we had deadlines that nobody had said. Oh, you get you get a you get a pass because we're down. Yeah, yeah. So it's funny how that works. Well, that turned into the Atta Boys later, but you know, they were just like, you know, but that that gave me the introduction that this this stuff isn't hard, but you got to be paying attention. You got to know how to look the stuff up. Mm-hmm. And uh, but fast forward, it you know. I'm always helping people, building computers, hooking them up. Um, yeah, a lot of, I, you know, I don't think a lot of people realize, like, uh, some of the specialty computers that you build now. Like, oh, yeah. When I was, okay, so when I first started working, I worked at a CAD company, and this was 30 years ago when AutoCAD was in its very early stages. Yeah. And, you couldn't buy a commercial computer to run AutoCAD. No, you had to buy a workstation. Usually came preloaded with the software, and you bought it as a bundle, a package. Yeah. And we would, our company, we would actually build them. Yeah. We would build stations the, the, that could run CAD. What people forget is some of those machines, like there was one for the software I use, um, and it came on a big old sun box. You know, it was like a heater on wheels, and the thing was a quarter of a million dollars. But it was the software, the box, and the support. Yeah. You know. Now everybody's balking, oh, it's five thousand dollars? Well, I remember when it was a quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> for one for one user to use the the software. But um And that five thousand no, dollar machine is twice as ten, twenty, hundred times as powerful. Oh, your your smartphone in your in your pocket can do more than most machines could do twenty years ago. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. And, and with the power too. Um but the problem is, is if you've ever been, see, I'm from the generation we used to build stereos, and you could either buy a boombox that had everything built in and everything was kind of it worked kind of good, or you built a stereo that had a tuner and it did it real good. You had an equalizer and it did its thing really well, and then you had this big tape deck that did everything better than anything that you know it, it, the the sound the sound was better, yeah, and bigger and broader. Well, that's how computers are today. You can go on to Dell.com or you can go out to Best Buy or any of these places and buy a machine and you'll get a good machine. It'll work. But the moment you bring home that game, whatever that is, you, you need, suddenly can't run it. You need a gaming computer. You, you, at the very least, you need a different video card. Well, yeah. if you bought a laptop, you're out of luck. Um, but the gaming computer... At the very least, needs more memory. Definitely a better video card. But the trouble with that is, is you need to somehow have some insights to know that if you buy a video card today, you're not going to be buying one six months from now for the next game you buy. So you wind up having, you always have to wind up paying more than you think you need to, just so it has enough life in it to get you through a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. You know. And that's the and that's the hard part is because everybody's like, oh, I want cheap. Yeah. And rightfully so. Because you can so. get cheap. You yeah. Can get cheap. Rightfully so. You know, everyone wants their. Don't, don't, they don't want, no one wants to feel ripped off. Yeah. Well, and, and for what most people use it for, if you're just cheap, doing right. Cheap works. If you're just doing Word and Excel, you don't need that, anything more than that. Yeah. If you're doing anything that does 3D graphics, um, either you're designing with it or you're gaming with it, you need some horsepower. A lot of it. Yeah. Um, and it's just like a car. Not everybody can get a Ferrari. But nobody, not everybody should have a Ferrari. No. 
you know. But there are a lot of people out there who want to have the Ferrari because they can. Well, you know, when you talk about that, you know, needing that extra horsepower, it reminded me of reading about Pixar when they first started doing the yeah the movies and when they did Monsters Inc. They they got so detailed on Sully's hair that it would take eight hours to yeah. render one minute of video. Yeah. And it was a room with like 150 servers in it. It would take those servers eight hours to render one minute. Yeah, I forget what the... I, I, I saw a, 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 um, a story about that, or that same general concept. They also said what it was now. I can't remember what the figure was. I, I compared it to what they're using at, at Industrial Light and Magic now, where it's just the, the same amount of what that machine can do now is like they can do like a half hour's worth of, yeah. of video, something like that, you know. Yeah, it's Just crazy. magnitudes more. Yeah, because that was, when did Monsters come out? Early early 2000s? Had to be, because, yeah, before it was pre-kids. Yeah, it was, so, I mean, because Toy Story came out in 95, 96? It was, did you ever hear that story with, with so Bob's, or Bob's, Jobs bought, Pixar, okay, because he wanted their hardware. They had built this this box that they were using to do the 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 secret sauce, the <laughs> computer yeah. aided um, movies, and yeah, they hadn't coined CGI yet. That hadn't yeah. been coined yet. And, and so they they Pixar built the hardware and the software and everything they were mm-hmm. using, and um, but Pixar's dream was to make movies. And Jobs wanted the hardware because he he'd he been ousted from Apple, so yeah. that's what he did, and he wanted to play with it, and he'd been shopping it, and he actually bought Pixar from George Lucas. Yeah, but anyway, they uh, very small world. They uh, wanted to make a movie, so they got into the deal with Disney to do Toy Story, and and they were getting through the movie, and they did a pre screening of it real early on just to show what they were doing. And they said Job sat there and he watched it. And when they left, he pulled them aside and said, we're not selling this, we're making movies. And Pixar was born. <laughs> Ta-da. That is funny. I hadn't heard that one. And that, but, but, you know, and yeah. now, well, when he died, he was the largest Disney shareholder because Disney bought Pixar for a whole lot of money. Now Disney's just buying everything else. Yeah. Getting their money back. But, uh, but got yeah, off on I mean, a trail now. So so now you're um, you're doing stuff to help people with okay. this networking and stuff. So and, the idea was born kind of, I won't say by accident, but from a few things. I've always helped friends and family I just always have, you know, they're, they're, I can remember many a holiday where I'm sitting in a corner with, with some family's computer fixing the mess that, you know, has accumulated on it and having my wife or my, or my, my mom go, um, you're visiting us. Can you like to say hi? And meanwhile, I'm doing something with that. So it's sort of, sort of a passion, a labor of love, love. But at the same time, I'm tinkering with all these things like networks, for me was like the same way cars were. It's something to tinker with. And then we have the neighborhood news groups. I need a recommendation for, it's always something that, that in my mom's day would have been like, well, why don't you just do it yourself? Paint the wall, fix a hole, hang a, hang a ceiling fan, whatever. And it's like the neighborhood we're in, nobody does that anymore. The one that was the head, the face plant, or the hand palm plant, was about networks. What do I need to fix this network? And then you get the usual string of go to Best Buy, do what Xfinity does, um, mesh this and mesh that. I'm like, no, <laughs> that's not fixing it. That's just making it not as bad. So. So I'm let's like, talk about I can what, help. Let's talk about what everyone uses. 
Oh, everybody. Before we get down there, what does everybody use? Everybody uses one of these Wi Fi routers that has usually at least the, the good ones have these masks on them that look like, you know, something out of an alien movie. Mm-hmm. The cheapy ones, although, or not, I won't say cheapy, none of them are cheap, um, are the ones that the ISP gives you, whether it be, you know, whoever it is, you know, in touch or, or Xfinity or whoever. And it's usually a little tower looking thing. Yeah. It's a little Wi Fi. The problem is, is these are like the boom boxes. They do six or seven things and none of them are great. You know, they make it easy. They, of course. It makes it easy to plug it in. But then, plug and play, right? I can yeah, plug it plug in and, pray. and I can kind of follow the directions yeah. and I can kind of set it up and I got internet. And but it sits in whatever room it sits in and the, the, the moment you're across the house, well, now you don't connect. Yeah. yeah. So then that, and that's what leads into the whole idea of meshing. Well, the meshing is like a leapfrog. This router talks, talks to, to this, this one runner. that talks to this one. Well, first off, the talking... Is chewing up bandwidth, and you're connecting to the one with the strongest signal. Not, not, Hopefully, not usually the one that's closest. Hopefully, that's that's the way it's supposed to work. But in a lot of cases, the hardware isn't smart enough to do that. To do that, and it just it grabs a signal. It's trying to grab your neighbor's signal for whatever reason, and not getting it because it's free. <laughs> <laughs> But it's paying for that. But but at the same time, it's too far away to care. You know, it can't get it. Maybe. (laughs) But that's the problem: is this stuff's not is not talking. It's not talking to each other intelligently. And and just as an example, I want we we talked about this before we we were started, Mm -hmm. and I talked about how I got these yeah these little doodads with with wires that run over to. Where I'm recording, which is a phone, I, I say that because you said the phone has more computing power than those That's computers. Right. And it's like, yes, it's not some big fancy rig. So that yeah, yeah. whoever's watching this, who thinks he's going to break in and get your nice big uh, Sony 4K? No, no, no 4K here. <laughs> <laughs> then you see all my blemishes. But um, we were talking about this, and I had um, a couple on one time and I had them both with the wired mics and then I had a wireless one that I was using for myself and their audio was really strong but mine was a little fading in and out a little sketchy it wasn't Mm -hmm. near as good yeah and talking about that from a wire wired versus wireless perspective Network's the same. Wired, well, wired is always going to give you advantages over wireless. And it's always going to be one of these moving scales where the wires are going to get better and the wireless, Wi-Fi is going to get better, but it's always going to be... One's always, the wire is always going to be ahead of the wireless because what they learn on wire, they eventually apply back on wireless to some degree. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is that wireless will always be subject to all the noise around you, stuff that you can't see or hear or feel. Whereas a wire is grounded. It's also, it also doesn't travel as fast. Yeah. Well, sometimes it tries to. Yeah. There's some, you know, I mean... It, it's kind of like using a satellite signal. I mean, well, well yeah. But there's a... Um, this this company, Ubiquity, makes products. And they're, they're great. They're kind of like Cisco... They're, they're Cisco products, but Best Buy prices. It's it's a nice, happy medium, these guys. And they're they've been around long enough where they're not a startup anymore. They make a product that you can put up on a pole, and it looks like a little dish. And then you put another one up on a far pole, it's another dish. You could, they can go up like seven miles apart and be chattering against each other, and they're like gigabit. So, I mean, they're, they're, going, they're, they're going crazy, mm-hmm. you know. But that's, that's the, when you look at stuff that they call it enterprise grade, and it's got better components inside, it's not the cheapest junk that they can get from China. Um, they're using parts that are sourced to be more reliable. That's that 4K camera, enterprise grade. <laughs> this is consumer grade. Yes. And then there's even kind of an in-between, right? That's what that camera is. It's a oh, prosumer. Oh, prosumer, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but that's, and the, the trouble is, though, is and I, I was sitting at work the one day, and I work for IBM now. So, 
I sit there and they have all these expensive Cisco wire uh, access points. And I'm sitting there going, this stuff is rock, this is before I put my own in at home. This stuff is rock solid. Never, never losing a signal. I'm always, I, 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 as long as I have my, my logins working, I can go into a conference room, I can walk down the hall, it works. Go home, I go, to the, I go down the hallway and I was losing signal. I'm like, this is stupid. And, and I was, at the time, I was looking at one of these things. I think it had nine antennas on it. And it was going to be like five, $600. It was insane. And then I find these other ones. They're wired back to a device. They run up. It looks like a smoke detector. Just sits on the, on the wall of the ceiling. It has better performance than anything that these guys are doing with the antennas. And it's like, 150 so a better a, a access point now what you have to do though is you have to add a switch you have to add a, a hub you have to add some wire components to it but in the end you get you're getting oh that's the other thing is I have all this stuff sitting near my TV well the TV is hooked into the switch it's not on the wireless the VCR uh, no DVR VCR I'm dating Man. myself again is Dang. is for for its updates it's plugged into the switch nobody even knows what that is good it's it, it, the technology like that's coming down that's like some high tech stuff there hey i never even heard of beta if if, if vinyl <laughs> can make a comeback i you can't write anybody VHS off just can make a comeback no i lo- don't know what would be funny is if beta max made a comeback and outperformed <laughs> outperformed vhs because <laughs> it always did who can make tracks it just marked the wrong marketing yeah yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, it was a better and it was technology. Smaller too. Yeah. The, on a completely different aside, the carts they call them carts in radio stations. They're about this big, but they're great big Betamax. Those are what that's what, before they went digital. That was the standard. Never a VG, a VHS because it was just the, this it, because it was a better format for professional usage. That's what won. But you never hear that story. Yeah. But. Uh, Back to the other thing is, and you wire all, everything that you can physically wire, do it. Wire is cheap. And then that frees up everything else for your, your phone, your tablet, your 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 laptop. And it, it matters because everything creates traffic on there. Yeah. Your phone, your tablet, your laptop. Yeah. They're always hitting it. Yeah. The two they giga- don't stop. The two gigahertz is, is super crowded right now. I mean, if you put up your phone and it says available Wi-Fi and most of them are your neighbor's. That's the two gigahertz network, because mm-hmm. five doesn't go that far. It won't reach. And so I tell people, I said, you know, save the two gigahertz stuff for your your doorbells, your Nest, your the little devices around your house that you, you don't you don't do anything with them. They just need to connect somehow. And then save the high bandwidth stuff for for, like, for the stuff that you use every day, all day. Yeah, I have my Apple TVs on the five. Because it's, you know, because you're streaming video. Right. You know, whether it's uh, the movies from iTunes or whether it's Amazon or whether it's uh, Hulu or yeah. Netflix. You're streaming video, so I wanted them on the... But for the so five... It's congested. Yes, but the five doesn't have the penetrating power to go through walls as easily, so you need more more units to blanket your area. That's right. So, you know, that's the trade-off. And that's, I mean, a buddy of... You, you know him. Um... Before he built his house, I said, wire every place you can. And he, he went nuts, and he, he wired every room in the house. It was a joy to put in this stuff for him because all these wires were already in the walls. All we had to do was figure out who went where. Mm-hmm. And we just had to simply go, access point here, access point here, and everything went back to a closet. The problem was, what builders think is a, cl- is a place for networking equipment is junk. Is it the... It's, it's, that, it's that little three. Closet. It's a little three-inch cabinet in an upstairs, usually a kid's bedroom closet. And it's like, what are you supposed to do with that? I mean, a rack, a rack of components needs some depth. It's about yeah. you know, twelve inches or more, and nineteen inches wide. <laughs> and it needs to cool. And needs a little air. Yeah, it can't just be in a in a, in a cabinet that's closed on the wall. It needs air. So, so we we took. And rerouted all those wires that the builder had put in. We rerouted them to a shelf above, and you know, got them all set up. Yeah. So, you know, and and for a lot of people now, getting like media rooms, right? 
the wire makes a big difference in there especially yeah. because you know like we talked about streaming video stream all your movies now are digital yeah. you don't actually buy a medium anymore and wire that up yeah you know and the problem is though is usually that room is in the corner of a house somewhere or an upstairs corner it's at it's in the it's in the hole of of signal the black yeah. hole and you've got to be prepared for that. You either have to layer wire or you've got to add another access point. That and the access points are wired back to the source. They're not talk. I mean, they can talk to each other. And, and the ones that I, at this friend's house, they're doing a little bit of both. They're, they're, they're wired back to the main hub, but they're meshed so that they each know what's going on so they can do the handoff. Mm -hmm. So that when you're walking through the house, the phone goes from this guy above you and you walk down the hall, okay, he now goes over here. Mm -hmm. That's the intelligent handoff, where it's not just the, the, the nearest one or, the, or the, the strongest one. They're kind of working in harmony with some software behind them. Gotcha. So it, you need a little bit of both, because otherwise, if you just rely on signal strength and distance, you'll be out in the backyard, and all of a sudden you'll be like, well, why, why am I not reaching? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so. that's interesting. So one of the many, 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 many years ago, I did a wireless training thing. Um, I convinced my manager to send me to it. I didn't really need it. But we um, one of the things they talked about was how access points had a restriction on the signal strength. Does that restriction still apply, do you know? It was like one watt. Anything beyond that, you needed an FCC license. They, I know what you're talking about. And they had the same restriction on CB radios. So you want to be dated? There you go. Yeah, man. Wow. Um, That's like the CB. The restriction is now based on the frequency. So if you have a two gigahertz, they call it spectrum, uh -huh. then you're given a certain amount of signal strength you're allowed to have. Okay. And that's, I don't know what it is offhand. I, I could, it would have to be one of those look it up things. But like when, like this one product that I like, the software that runs with it, I can dial down into the product, into the, the access, each access point and either leave it at high power on the radio or I can dial it back or leave it on auto or whatever. And that way, if you had access points, say you put them in and they were too close together, they wouldn't be stomping each other. Okay. I've never seen that happen. You can never have too much network. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Nobody dreamed 10 years ago we'd have anywhere near the junk that we're streaming on. on, on I mean, we didn't even have networks back then. No. Nothing that mattered. No. Just at work. You didn't stream video on your telephone. It, <laughs> that was insane. There was no way. No. But It wasn't even close to Today, we thing. have products that are coming out. There's gonna be, in the next 10 years, there's going to be stuff that we never dreamed of today. They're all going to wind up being something network. You need to start thinking about future proofing because let's take the worst case scenario. You're in a house that has no network whatsoever. Well, the worst case scenario is you bite the bullet and you let somebody start drilling holes in your walls and running some wire and then patching the holes and then you have a reason to paint your rooms. You know, is it ideal? No, but you're going to wind up being able to enjoy your network for 10, 15 years to come without worry you know it'll and it'll be a selling point yeah you know that's another thing i mean i i've been tinkering around with these other things the cost for like fiber optic is is like cheaper than wire and if i ever get a chance and and, and to help somebody i'll tell them run the cable now or the wire now if you can and if you can afford, you know you want to do this we'll run some fiber up there just because Maybe we'll use it. Maybe you won't. You could sell that. Later on, you'll be like, hey, there's fiber in the walls. Yeah. Or. And that's a big, th that'll be a big thing. I know it doesn't sound big You know big all now. those guys on the sides of the roads that's now? That's going to be With big. their big orange reels of stuff going in the fl in the ground? It's that's fiber. Fiber. Yeah. They did this. When I was up north, um, Verizon was rolling out up, up in Jersey. This was 2010, 2009. I watched all these, these trucks with the orange reels on them. That was Fios. That was mm -hmm. fiber. And it, maybe it's finally coming to us yeah, all these and, years later. And, you know, I know I know a lot of people are not thinking about this right now because it's like 
it's it works now. But let's talk about that 4K. Mm -hmm. Right? Not much stuff is shot in actual 4K. No. Right now. And, there, and there's reasons for it because they don't have equipment to necessarily do it. The equipment to do it is very expensive. It's in some cases it's almost overkill for what you're trying to do. But as soon as you start streaming 4K videos, yeah, you're, you've you're, increased the size of that file. I think it's like 16 times. Yeah, it's it's um it's a square. Yeah, you know it's 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 mathematically uh, uh, you know a square of the uh, you know it's um it's it's word? not it's not just this it's you got yeah. 480 you got 720 you got 1080 yeah. you got 2K you got so everyone 4K. yeah everything's a um an ex exponential yeah it's exponential growth and yeah I'm only the math major I can't even think the word exponential it's okay um. We know but, that uh, oh, we're going to let it go since you know what CBs are because <laughs> we know it's a memory. That's thing. why I told you not to bring out the scotch. I'd really lose my <laughs> mind. But I heard at the latest um, electronics show that was recently, um, they, 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 I forget which company it was, probably Sony, 8K cameras already. What are you going to do with them? Yeah, they're going to be gorgeous. Great picture. But I helped a, one, of the, one of the girls from, or ladies, from the church she called me up and you know I'm not advertising I'm doing like AV equipment too per se um, but I'm a geek I know everything or I, I tinker with everything and she's like my TV my DVD my DVR works my TV doesn't come out I hear sound but I don't hear this can you come over and just take a look see what's wrong I go over there and it turns out it's uh, long story short the channel for the TV input on her tuner and all the HDMI output I inputs were blown. Something probably good old Sienna Power where it just yeah. blows up and <laughs> surge. yeah, something surged it. Which is why I tell everybody on anything that is important, put a UPS. Yeah. Because if nothing else, the UPS will take the hit. Or better yet, it'll keep it where your stuff isn't crashing every time the power burps. And put your refrigerator on a surge protector too. Yeah. Well, you got the protectors. Surge protectors are one thing, but a lot of them don't. They're good for lightning strike where they'll clamp down and they'll stop a direct hit. They're not good for brownouts mm. and they're not good for, you know, and, and or, or overcurrent because those are considered just fringes of, you know, fringes of the, of the power. They're not wrong. They're not right, but they're not wrong to the point where a surge protector is going to kick in. Anyway, um, so I was over there, and I'm looking at her equipment. I said, you know, you could replace this tuner. I said, but you got a bigger problem. The tuner was from when there was S-Video. There was component video, which is a completely different cable system than everything else on the market today. So she's not looking at replacing a tuner. She's replacing pretty much every component, every wire going to the TV. Because now nothing is going to be compatible. But if you go out to a store or you go onto you know one of these online like Crutchfield or something, and say I want this nice new tuner, it's not going to hook up. It's it's lost it. You know it's it's too it's too new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you you wind up with the same things with 4K. I had picked up with one of the tax things one year. I we picked up a 4K TV, beautiful TV. I don't have a single component that feeds 4K. Because I'm not going out and spending. It's okay. There's nothing running. For, there's no. Well, that's good. I'm ahead of the curve for a change. There's nothing broadcast in 4K. No. You know, the only thing that I've even seen is um, like Netflix in 4K or something. Yeah. Well, they. they but it's not. No, it's not. They talk about it, and all they yeah. did was. But you know, it's th not th actual that's, 4K. But that's the problem. Is all these? It's it's just like when we went from vinyl to a track to cassette to pick a format. Is is you wind up having to replace everything to to do the to to, to do the new thing mm -hmm. and it's the same thing with all this equipment and to get back to the the whole idea with fiber a lot of these components these days are future looking where you could hook up fiber now it'd be overkill for a house like you wouldn't believe but you could do it yeah you know the components are out there. It's it's out there because it's in the, um, it's 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 in the, the business world. Yeah. You know? Well, and it's getting to the point where you got You have to have fiber up at least to your backyard. Yeah, that would be that, that would be nice. I'm waiting for the knock on the door and the little door hanger that says we've installed fiber. Let's let's sell it to you. 
Yeah. Waiting for that little card to hang on my door, because that'll be the that'll be that'll be a beautiful. It day. Makes a big difference. Yeah, you know, it does. Yeah. I've had it. I was I was I was tor- I like I said, we had it up north, and we moved away. You get spoiled. You yeah. get. You know, when you're when you're one one gig gigabit going up and going down, and you're back to piddly little droplets of, of data. <laughs> well, and that's like when you get the thing that says up to whatever speed from Comcast or whoever it is. It, it what the biggest issue is that pipe in the backyard. Not yeah. yeah. Oh, but the but here's the small print. Uh, and I, I ran into this because every all the all the kids in the house are streaming something now. Or, or or whatever. Yeah, on their they phone all have and they, their they all have a one terabyte limit cap. So if you had a bigger pipe, you want to hit in the limit, sir. <laughs> so you, just so you can't win. Yeah. So they need to take the they need to they need to come up to the twenty first century. We we've made it out of the nineteenth. We've limped through the twentieth, and now we have to actually kind of make it into the twenty first century. <laughs> Yeah, and so it, and that's what I want to do. I'm trying to help people who just they get they get they get the misinformation either because it's the story the Xfinity guy told them, and and the, and the information isn't wrong, but it's what they're selling. Yeah, it's the product that they have in their van that they can help you with, or it's what they know. Or yeah, yeah. I mean, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just not the right solution. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a, like it, it's like last week. You you know Ed who was here last week. Right, he's talking about killing bugs and stuff. And it's like, I thought I knew how to kill bugs, but then he started talking about other things. I'm like, I had no idea. I had no idea you killed bed bugs with heat. You know, it's like, now I went out and I told my wife that, and she's like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, okay, so I'm a dumbass, but okay. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I've ever seen with that is that they wrap, they, they wrap it in plastic and let it suffocate or something. Yeah. yeah. No, I was like, like, wow. Whatever. But, you know, it's, it's just sometimes what you're hearing is it's what they know. Right, it's not necessarily that they're that they're even just trying to sell you something. It's just that's what they know. No, the one tech I had, I'm, I'm, and this is what always gets me. You see on the news groups, which is worse, this company or this company? And my my, I have to bite my tongue because my answer is they all suck. <laughs> it's it, but the problem is, is that they they all there's a reason for that. There is no you're as a consumer in a household, you're never going to get 100% uptown. It doesn't matter how much you're paying. It's the system into your neighborhood is not designed for guaranteed uptime. Mm-hmm. By design, it can't do it. Okay. Worse than that, companies share pieces of the network leading into your house. That's great. So you might be on you know, X network and Y network is going down that week, or it could be the other way around. But somebody could hit a pole somewhere, take them both down, and now everybody's out. Mm-hmm. I mean, the only way you get redundancy is by using something completely different, like a 4G, you know, a, a cellular. But nobody wants to pay for that. That's crazy. But you could do it. Mm-hmm. If, you, if, you, if you owned a home business where your uptime was critical, there is a method where you can do what they call failover, where you have both lines coming into your house, and when one breaks, it automatically changes over, just like a generator kicks in when the power goes out. Mm-hmm. But you're paying, you're paying for that. It's a service. And, and I think that, that that right there is is an interesting point, and that I think that's where it changes for the future, is working from home, mm-hmm. running a business from your home, running your website from your home, Uploading video from your home, yeah, all those things you're doing that are critical to business function, yeah, in your life. Not not just watching television, yeah, but doing your job, getting paid. You do that from home if you don't have a network, right? And and like if anybody goes to my website, Blomstrom.tech. Nobody can spell Blomstrom, so I'm good. good. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be in your it'll be on your comments at the bottom, right? Um, that is sitting on an, on a resurrected computer in my game room on my network, and it's just everything is running right in my own house. But I'm not I'm not gonna panic if I lose power or anything like that because it's not absolute urgent that this thing goes down. It's an inconvenience. Mm-hmm. It's a somebody went to go log in or something or look at it and oh well. 
versus hosting it externally. If I ever had a critical need, yeah, I'd put it back out in the world. Mm -hmm. But right now, and that's the other thing I was, I, I'm kind of pseudo offering is if somebody has a a need where they don't want to do a Wix page or any of those other do-it-yourselfers, and they just they want something that's a little more, I'll say old-fashioned, where it's kind of crafted. We can do that. And if it just needs to be a splash page, like my mom um, has a business in Charlotte. She needed a splash page for a business that she's essentially winding down, so she doesn't want to pay for this for a site. She still owns the domain, mm -hmm. you know, from GoDaddy, and she just wants something that, to show up when people type it in to say, hey, uh, go, go over there now, you know, go to my new business. And I have that sitting on my server. And if, if I, you know, and if anybody hits it, um, great. If not, you know, if the, if, like I said, if I lose power, yeah. I lose power. Well, and, you know, now that you, you even talk about that, that's that's something, too, that a lot of people do have as a website. Yeah. It's not critical. Yeah. You know, may, maybe they blog or things like that. And, and their uptime that they normally have is more than enough mm -hmm. to host it at yeah. their house. Or even your house, like what you're talking about, but you know, you could install a help them install a web server in their house, and yeah, you could do that on any machine. Now, most people, I mean, in this day and age, it's usually cheaper. It, it, you have to weigh weigh your options. You have to know, you, and this is the conversation I want to have. Most of the, if you look at my website, a lot of the pages end in "Let's have a conversation," because everybody's need is different. Everybody's idea of what is great is different. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas somebody might be perfectly happy with the router they get from the ISP, somebody might be cursing that thing every day, multiple times a day. Yeah, that was my old InTouch router. You know. I said it. <laughs> but no, you know what I did to the old InTouch router? I turned it off. I use it for the modem only. Yeah. I put it in something called bridge mode, and now I have a real router behind it. Yeah, well, the modem sucked on it, too. Yeah. I, I was like... Well, back to where I started... I designed the first cable modem. We designed, we, we invented Doxis. So all you gotta do is go out to any store and if, you're, if, you're, if your modem that's on your ISP is a Doxis modem, it's supposed to work. Unless the ISP has been playing around and they don't, to, to keep you from going to the store and buying yeah. the modem. Yeah, that sounds like something they do. Like this place I used to work, they changed the BIOS and the yeah. switches so that you couldn't just use any switch you yeah. had to use their switches yeah i know i know two of the isps that we have near in uh, in siena for us they have modems you can buy at you know pick a store mm -hmm. you know and so you can do it um the friend that we were talking about has one and i'm like oh, that's a nice and it's a little tiny thing little motorola one and i was pleasantly surprised because it's only a modem i'm like this still exists <laughs> it doesn't have wi-fi it doesn't have a router in it. It doesn't try to be other stuff. It's just a modem. And his speeds, I mean, I think he's pulling, I, he's paying for and getting 250 megabit down. And I'm like, that's not bad. Wow. So. Yeah. And then up is always the. Up's always, they always cheat you on the up. Yeah. Because they don't, they don't want you running a web server. Yeah. Or, or something bigger, you know. But that's where the fiber comes in because, well, they'll still throttle it, but. There's no reason not to have bandwidth. It's free. It comes with the pipe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'll change over time. It has to. Yeah. But, you know, as the infrastructure changes, then what your needs are are going to change. Yeah. Because once, like what you talked about, once you got more stuff you can load and mm -hmm. 4K starts coming through it. Yeah. It's like crack. You, you, you get addicted to something, you want more of it. Yeah. So. And 4K is just a matter of time. It's and but especially with 8K right behind it, yeah. 4K is gonna suddenly go mainstream. Yeah, and I, I forget what it. I forget what the the equ equivalent was. I think 35 millimeter was equivalent to 1080 or to 2K. I forget which one. Probably it was. 2K. I think because they fi they finally hit it. Maybe it was 2K. Yeah. Now they're so beyond it. 4K. Yeah. Is like. I think it's eight or sixteen times. It's sixteen. It's, as much it's, it's as thirty-five a, yeah, millimeter. It's an exponential. But thirty-five. And, so you got the think of what's on a big screen. It's like it's at like a the, movie theater. It's like the difference between a regular movie and IMAX. Yeah, exactly. 
It's that big a difference. Yeah. And when that's coming through your pipe, hey, you're going to chew it up. Well, that's the thing. It's not just you sitting in your living room. It's your kids on their phone yeah. or their tablets or their phone and their tablets. Well, I love yeah. that one. And even, Yeah, well, their phone, their tablet, and their Apple TV. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and they're watching something on all three of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll be looking at the logs on, on, do on, it. on my network. I'll be looking at the logs once in a while to make sure that we're I, I'm not seeing any weirdness or anomalies where I have to, like, fix something and I start noticing that like there's throughput at these peak times and it looks like the, and it looks like they're, they're, they're pulling de- data from every device they own at yeah, once they're watching, they're watching TikTok here YouTube there and a movie up there yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. or they're playing like Minecraft here and TikTok there and a movie up there or maybe it's TikTok everywhere who knows yeah. But my oldest, he has, I mean, beautiful, beautiful system. I, this was proof that th- that the wireless gaming would, is actually f- feasible. He has in his, he didn't, he didn't want me running a wire into his room. So we did. And he has one of these, um, I think it's by Asus. It's a, it's a, a Wi-Fi antenna on the back of his PC. Now the PC is, is a gaming computer, but he has a wireless antenna on the back of this thing, and now that I put the good access points in, he's getting 600 mega or 400 megabit. Just wow, <laughs> just right there it, within the network. Wow. Well, I, I do want to before we before we close up, I, I wanted to go back real quick to when I was I talked earlier about the broadcast strength. Okay. And part of part of what brought that up was. The the reason I went and got the training was to we had a customer who wanted to look at possibly doing wireless networks for their controls, and of course, one of the biggest issues, especially early on, because we're talking two thousand four, two thousand five. Yeah, it was, was that, security it was concerns. Well, that was the least of the problems, but yeah. But there, so they they were talking about one of the things they were talking about was just putting in a. Uh, booster on it boosting the signal making it stronger <laughs> well that's a that's okay but first you had the FCC issue but then you also think about wireless security in terms of how far am I broadcasting the signal yeah you know and when you start thinking about broadcasting a wireless signal at 10 watts you're talking about a very wide potential area people who you had no intention of ever connecting to are going to be it's like it's like turning up your loudspeaker to to twenty, and they're gonna st- even if they're not even if they don't care about your signal if they're getting a hit with it, and one of their devices and it it comes through in the weirdest places it'll show mm-hmm. up, like it, if you ever see lights flicker or TVs do something funky, that's a signal that could be a signal that's just stomping your 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 system, mm-hmm. something like that ten watts worth of power. It's gonna go in, and you're gonna hear hum on machines, or, or, or it's like it's like when people used to turn on the vacuum, and your stereo would go nuts because it was it was it was that <laughs> that was that noise going through the electrical line. Yeah, you know, same thing. Yeah, it's unwanted noise. It's unwanted, you know. Yeah. So it, so, and the reason I bring that up is just putting more power no, on it. It's not enough. It's not is there. not necessarily gonna fix it. Give yeah. you the signal you're looking for, and it's potentially a, you know, you're sending your signal out over an even wider area. Right. Well, that and that's the whole idea behind. Remember, what I was saying before, I have the control to be able to tune back the power on on the APs, and that's that's part of it. You know, that way your neighbor is not getting your full strength. If you have one, say, on your back patio, maybe you can dial it down. Depends on your back your backyard. If you have a normal, you know, normal backyard for this part of the country, it's like a postage stamp. Yeah. So you need to dial it down. If you've got one of these, you know, King Kong backyards, well, then maybe you got to turn it up or buy a couple more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and like you said, it doesn't. Well, people think of it as like concentric circles of broadcast, and it doesn't work that way. It no. does weird stuff. Well, because your houses are constructed out of things that waves don't pass through, mm-hmm. and they or it does so differently. And if you've got, you know, if you've got spack or not spackle, but you know. If, if you have certain materials on your walls or if you have metal based paints it all contributes you know yeah. if you've got metal framing because you live in an area that has metal framing 
God help you. Yeah. You're not getting a signal through there anyway at all. You yeah. Know? Yeah, we used to, when, when we, again, you are talking about wireless control systems, <laughs> they would have to go out and do a wireless survey, which mm-hmm. customers didn't even want to pay for that because it would cost so much. Because you had to see, what's this signal going to do? If I broadcast the signal right here, yeah. What's it going to do? And it would do some weird stuff. Now, you know, the beauty of that is, is they make really expensive equipment to do that really well. But I can do some really cheap stuff using an app on my phone. Yeah. As long as it's on the 2 or the 5 gigahertz networks, I can wander around and go, no, signal's strong here. It's not that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I can walk through the house and figure out if there's a hot spot or a dead spot. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's, is it super accurate? No, probably not. But it's, it, it, it gives you a good idea whether or not... Close enough for government work. That's it. <laughs> whether or not it's worth pursuing that, that problem. Yeah. yeah. You know. If you got a signal, you got one, right? Yeah. But I can tell you the decibels of how big the signal is. Yeah. You know, is it, is it a good signal? Or is it a, oh, that's not a very good signal at all. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, you know, so you're... You know, one of the things that you're doing is you're trying to help people do this build a build a service that helps people do these things and design these things and, and answer questions answer questions and what's what should i do with my network and the first thing you should do is if you're building a house or you got some major reno going on and you want to make it high tech call somebody you get, start get with some Rob if, if you're close by but call somebody yeah anybody to come in and say how should i wire this how do I get this house ready yeah. so that I'm not doing this reno 10 years from now so that in 10 years this house is up to par with the houses that are getting built two neighborhoods over. Right. And the, pro- the problem is is that the builders aren't, aren't up to speed either. Yeah. They're, 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 their idea of wiring is what's convenient for their construction. So yeah. that's why it winds cheap. Want- right. And that's why it winds up in an upstairs closet yeah. in some poor kid's bedroom yeah. um, is because it's not... It's not optimized for, I mean, houses today are still, the blueprints are the same concerns for like um, networks as we had in 1980 for cable. They have an, they have, they're, nobody has a room or a little, you know, a little closet room with some air conditioning in it for a, um, you know, a, a server room. Yeah. Houses don't have that. And the builders need to, to, to be sensitive to that and eventually hey, realize... We can't even keep this room... Yeah, and this is a room. This is a whole room. We can't even keep this properly cooled. Yeah. Imagine a closet that's running yeah. like, two or three servers and some yeah. and, switch and, gear. I, and, 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 and my, my, I had to bring a server in. I had it in the garage. Why? I don't know what I was smoking thinking I could put a server in the garage. But Is that scotch? Uh, probably needed more of it. <laughs> um... <laughs> But this thing, as soon as it started getting re- kind of warm in the early spring, this poor server, it's an old HP blade, you know, you know big, big thing. Mm-hmm. It started sounding like a jet engine was taking off. It was just whining at full blast, you know. Trying to cool. Trying to cool. And then, so I took it up, I took it inside, took it upstairs, and it's too loud for the, for the house. You know, it's in the, it's in the game room. So I thought, okay, it's in the game room. The kids will close their doors. It's not on it, it, because it's in the house. It's getting house air. It's doing better, but still, kids are like, that's awfully loud. So you need a room that you can put some sound deadening in, and 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 quiet the stuff. That's if you have a regular, you know, a commercial server. Yeah, they haul them even. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if you build a server um, using the same kind of fans that you have in a PC, basically taking a PC and laying it outside. Well then, they're much quieter, you know. But yeah. magnitudes, you know, just you don't even know they're there. Yeah, and you know this is one of the things people don't, I don't think, realize is there are water cooled. Oh yeah, but the but, even a computer. But you have to be prepared for that yeah. because they're making systems now that they're advertising as leak proof and this that and the other thing. You have to be ready for the worst scenario. You need to be ready for the. It's not when it if it leaks, it's when. Because eventually it will leak. Something will dry rot, a seal will break, and your system will get wet. Yeah. But I saw a system that was uh, demoed um, online. They submerged the whole big commercial system in 
uh, what is that? Um, mineral oil. Non-conductive. But it was, it was cooled mineral oil, and they could unplug stuff, they could put their hands in the oil, and it was just flowing all through, around these boards of the oh. system. It was a riot. It was like a fish tank of this mineral oil, and it's being pumped through some sort of a cooler you know, device to, to, to pull the heat back out. Yeah. But this whole rack system was laying in this bathtub of mineral oil. It was, it was beautiful. Wow. I mean, it was like, now there, but, but you got, it's mineral oil. It's, yeah, you can put your hands in it, but when you come out, you're dripping with it. <laughs> oh, <oil. yeah. laughs> Yeah. You don't just wipe the stuff off. You got really soft hands after that, but you know. Yeah. Well, that's nice. That's always a bonus. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. IT department now has the softest skin in the. In the Guess there is the always a, the uptick, but so I mean, there are other things than water. I wouldn't recommend that for your house. I've seen yeah. some of these guys, the YouTubers, do it, and it's funny what happens. You know, the one guy succeeded pretty well, uh, but the other guy, he took a system apart, and after about six six months, and was like, okay, this 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 toy is done we're done with this <laughs> but again that's the that's the level of cooling we're talking about needed in some of this computing power now yeah but the problem is there's no place to put the heat yeah if you take it out of your computer and you if you're running some serious computers or if it's a whole family all with gaming computers you suddenly have an air conditioning problem you can't keep your house cold i mean i've seen like i said some of these youtubers yeah. have that problem they're running the one guy he ran um, a water loop, and it was a, he ran copper pipe around the around this room that he because he was building. He had a YouTube channel that was running out of his house, so it was like twelve guys. Never heard of that. <laughs> and but it was twelve guys, not one guy. They all had their gaming computers. They all had the, and they had their server in the other room. So he ran a water loop that went to a radiator out on the back deck. Oh wow! He still couldn't get the heat out fast enough. Because they were just pumping so much, yeah, you know, all the all the electrical equipment. Yeah. Oh, and that's the other thing is every all the stuff wants they want it wants to be fed. It wants more power. Yeah. Everything wants more power, more cooling. More cooling means more power, and we're gonna do it with windmills. So, but to get back to Ed's <laughs> point, you can either do it cheap and fast or good. You can't do all three. You can't do all three. You can't do it cheap, fast, and good. You can do cheap and fast. Yeah. Cheap and but that gets to what I was saying with PCs. Fast, good and is fast. I don't want to do a cheap PC. You know, yeah. I want to help somebody well, realize their dream. There's plenty yeah. of those. I, I can't. If I tried, I probably couldn't make one cheap enough. Because the Dells of the world. I mean, when I was building modems, Dell came to us and said, "We want a five dollar modem." Meanwhile, at the time, they were at least seventy five dollars. And we looked at Dell like, "You're crazy." Five dollars? No. And then the wind modem was born, which was taking the processor chip off of the modem and letting the Pentium do it, which was a, hor a horrific idea back then because the Pentium wasn't strong enough to do both. But we made $5 modems. <laughs> we gave yeah. the customer what he wanted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, that's, but that's what these companies that make cheap PCs do. They, they optimize in places that most people won't care about. And they make a product that's good enough. Yeah. You know. Well, Rob, I think that um, I think there's there's people who need this, especially when you think about where you live, and you know. But a lot of a lot of places are popping up, and and people are working from home. People have got a lot of a lot of AV equipment. People got they're streaming everything on video on everything. They, all this stuff they're doing. And they need somebody who's going to help them understand what that means. Yeah. I mean, and I'm happy to just sit down and talk it through with them. You know, that's that, 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 that's fine. You know, I don't necessarily have to be the contractor who comes in and does it for them. I'd love to do that. Yeah. But I want to get to the, I want to get the conversation going. Let's I have a conversation. Able, I want to talk. I want to, I want to hear what you think you want. And I'll give you my two cents, which is always more like, 20 cents and you could take it with a grain of salt or you can go oh how do we do this mm -hmm. and we'll go from there yep you know well Rob I appreciate you coming and sharing all this with us and um blomstrom.tech blomstrom.tech.com no blomstrom.tech blomstrom.tech 
Oh yeah, because dot tech Longstreet. all of a sudden was this new domain .tech. thing. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them now. There's like yeah. dot. You know, dot coms came and went. Dot, dot biz nobody wanted because it sounded like you were selling something. And but now dot tech came along and I went. I think I finally have to put my name in front of one of those, and that's just it. It's my name. Blomstrom dot tech. You know, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I'm not. I'm not going to be doing something and then have my name sitting around going. Why didn't you it was get, him. Why didn't you get the Blomstrom dot guru? Because there's a lot of places that dot guru doesn't work right yet. You missed an opportunity there. Like I said, I'm not going to walk around telling people I'm a guru. I'm I'm still learning because if you stop learning, you're dead. Well, there's you got to yeah. keep learning. Well, if you're obviously still learning. You know this stuff and CB radio. So, <laughs> <laughs> Rob, thanks a lot for coming. Oh, many. And I appreciate it, and I hope it all works out. Thanks for, for you. dinner. And uh, oh yeah. yeah, happy to. Man, that's, this guy knows how to wine and dine. You. That's what I do. So anyway, I just want to encourage everybody out there to be thinking about this stuff because the future's coming at you and it's coming fast. So. It's so bright, it. you got to wear shades. No, that doesn't work here. That's right. It's so bright, you do have to wear shades. Yeah, because because the the power that you're requiring is going to light your house up. But it's going to be blinding. <laughs> so anyway, I just want to encourage you to do that, and uh, and uh, God bless you.